Come on then. Oh, I need to go to the temple. Before I forget, we need to go to the temple and we need to take sketches of those other shrines for Orion to make replicas of. Excuse me. You may have everyone fooled, but I see what you're doing here. The call of gold sends you scurrying like a rat. Well, on this particular instance, yes, I am kind of scurrying around to, to whip up a little bit of gold, so I can't criticize you there, but also, you're not very nice. You honor the reclamations with your actions. What's that breathing sound? Do you hear that? I'm not the only one that hears that breathing sound. Am I going mad in a go? You you definitely don't hear anything. Right, this is one of their rooms. Oh, we they've got the No, it's stealing. I can't steal from a priest. That's just asking for trouble. Oh, he's got so many rare books though. Am I going mad? Oh, there's... Oh, there's the rest of the history of Raven Rock there as well. Right, we're not stealing from priests. This place looks friendly enough. Maybe we should put our weapons away. Yeah, no, good call. We, def we didn't find anything down there. So I just wondered if you had more of those ash creatures in your basement. But I, I think I'm going mad. Right, so we need... Oh, excuse me. Uh, is it Boethia? No, it's not intrude on his prayers. Right, Very Shrine well. of Boethia. We One-handed weapon steal more damage. damage. That is quite a nice one. We need gold, but I don't need it so badly that I'm going to steal from Mephala. Prices are better. Funnily enough, that's going to serve us quite well. And we've already got the Blessing of Azura. Now, Mind the that. Are Azura, Mephala, Leave them to their practice Boethia. and their preaching. They mean to reclaim what was... And let's get selling. It's actually turning out to be a lovely day. That's such a beautiful blue sky. It's a shame about Red Mountain constantly spewing ash into the air. You've actually got some of those books we saw. Right, Bone Volume 1, Guide to Bravel. We need that. That You're a long way from Bravel, but I'll take it. And Varieties of Faith in the Empire. We're having that. Now, you have plenty of money on you. Can I offload some of what I found to you? Because I do need a little bit of cash. I've got enough, but I just want to make sure I've got plenty on hand after. I've already given 2,000 septums to Rallis. Yeah, I think I think that will do. If you need any supplies, you know where to find me. I do, and I will. My husband Thank and you. feared visitors would shun Raven Rock. I'm glad to see he was mistaken. Yes, no, it's it's actually quite pleasant. In a way. Oh, is that... Hang on a minute. Is that, like, the beak of a raven and then these are the, the wings of a raven? Or am I reading far too much into the design of their homes? I think I'm reading too much into the design of their homes. All right, we've got 2,000 septums. I think the blacksmith is a bit of a ladies' man. He seems rather popular, doesn't he? Right, let's go back to Rallis. We've got 2,000 symptoms for him, and a little bit of cash left over for us. Morning. Good day. Yeah, we are going to be knackered, aren't we, by the time we get Lucian. It's not even afternoon, and we're already running backwards and forwards outside of town. Oh, he could show a little more gratitude, could Rallis. A people person. Really, is he? At all. He, he's not. He's just not. We've met some gruff characters in our time, but he might be one of the gruffest, right? Rallis, I've sorted out our funding problem. Found the money. There does seem to be a bit of a hole in your your face mask there, which kind of defeats the purpose. I can see your nose poking through. Look, uh, yeah, I've, I've got the money. Here's 2,000 septums. 
I never get tired of that sound. Yeah, I bet you don't. It'll take me a few days to dig up some more laborers, but swing back when you get a chance. See how we're doing. I mean, I suppose it's one sign in your favor that you just don't simply take the money and run. You're probably obsessed at this point, though, of seeing what's buried in there. Now, let's have a little bit of lunch and keep moving. Is there a road somewhere? I thought there was going to be a road. Well, we know where we're going. We're going up to the mountain tops. And those are some weird rock formations. You know what? If we're going past there, we're going to take a closer look at those. Right, lunch. And I got some sweet rolls for you in a go in a little bit too. I'll keep them on me because otherwise you will eat them far too quickly. They just disappear. And they're with you. What's... Are those egg pods? Spider egg pods. There go. Don't. I don't know what those are. No, those are spider egg pods. Let's stay clear of those. I thought I heard scuttling. I think we might be alright. Hello. Ash hopper. It's chitin plate. I'm okay with not eating insect meat, though. Let's take the jelly. There's another excavation over there. Oh. Oh, okay. There's more ash hoppers. Okay. Oh. God, they're hard. Bloody hell, no wonder they make kites in armor. Some more? In a go? You got him? They did not know who they were messing with. Good. Job. Is that an ash spawn? I can't tell. But I'm gonna think it's safe that we're gonna. Mm, okay. Hello? Oh, that's not an ash spawn. Oh, is that a Spriggan? What the? What the hell is? Oh, I missed. Oh, God. I don't think Fireball's going to be good against a burnt Spriggan somehow. Am I on fire still? What the hell happened to this thing? Other than the fact it's probably burnt. That's... Kind of demonic. It's like a Spriggan cross for the flame atronach. Burnt Spriggan wood. That's not something you see every day. Yep, there's the other barrow. Let's just steer clear. We are on the clock, remember. We have a long way to go. And not an awful lot of time to get there. Is that a house? That's... That is a house. Nothing in that hollowed out trunk. I wasn't expecting to see a house. Out here. That is a still smouldering campfire. Which is emitting a strange amount of light. This seems abandoned, but it also seems... Like a trap. Anything? Oh, hello. What? That's coming. That's coming. That's coming. I'm. Do you like to carry around kitchenware, don't you? It is not a judgment, just an observation. No, but it's. But it's not that I like to do it, and I know you're not judging. It's just that. But if we want to fill our kitchen cabinets with kitchenware, then we've got to. Okay, no, he needs to do his business. He needs to nip behind a tree for a bit. Let's give the man some privacy. And... Well, that's Dwemer, clearly. 
And we are going to go straight past those pillars. And it's locked. It's an elevator of some kind. I doubt it heads into Doomsbazaar. We're still a way away from there. And it didn't reach kind of wide. Doomsbazaar was sort of singularly deep. Very deep. I hope he, in a go, this is, is finished behind that tree rather soon. Oh, it is actually quite cold. Oh, no, it is freezing cold. Right. I might have to summon in a go in a minute. What is this? If this is going to be another burial ground, i got to say, they've picked a hell of a spot for it. Yellow Gear Barrow. Right, I think I'm going to have to head on inside. I don't think I can wait, given how cold it's getting. I'm sure Inigo's going to be right behind me. Okay. Yeah, it's no warmer in here. If anything, it's getting colder. There's something very big in here, and actually, we are suffering from frostbite. This might not be an easy fight. Not at all. There is a body there, though. Oh, my vision's kind of blurry, too. My money is on Frost Troll. I've got frostbite in my bloody feet now. What's that gonna... Ah, oh, this... We're not in a good spot. We're not in a good spot at all. We need to make a campfire. We'll take shelter in here until the wind has died down. Right, let's... I think it's just one. Let's get this party started. And... Oh, we can actually test out the Dwemer also. What the hell is that? Right? Oh, sorry, Inigo. Okay. Try not to hit Inigo with this. And we got it. No, okay. We gotta be We gotta be very careful. Here we go. Oh, he's coming towards us. Um, can I pack this up? In it go. Careful. Right, okay, that's packed up. Let's get in. Oh! He's got a big club. He's got an awfully big club. Okay, let us proceed more carefully and not get within reach of whatever's in here. Atronek. There he is. Right. Come on, then. Can I bait you over here? Can I distract you for Inigo to go ham on? That's it. Just fire away. I is good against Frost, right? Oh, he's big and he's strong, and I, I'm worried. Got him. Right, if I can. Right. He's just kind of standing there and taking it. Timber, Timber. Are you thinking me a lot of warning? These, these aren't your giants you get in Skyrim. I've got. They've got four eyes. They're, they are, they're, it's like a troll and a giant had a baby, honestly. That's what it looks like. Is that a, there is a chest. Let's look at the chest. Bow diminishing, I'm gonna take all that, nothing in particular. But. This isn't Nordic, is it? It looks more marbled. 
than something Nordic, doesn't it? The Spear of the Snow Prince. All of the Snow Prince. This isn't the snow... Hang, hang, hang on. The Fall of the Snow Prince. An account of the battle of the Moas Ring as transcribed by Lokheim, chronicler to the chieftain Engjaldir White Eye. From whence he came we did not know, but into the battle he rode on a brilliant steed of pallid white. Elf we called him, for elf he was, yet unlike any other of his kind we had ever seen before that day. His spear and armour bore the radiant and terrible glow of the unknown magicka, and so adorned this unknown rider seemed more white than warrior. What troubled, nay frightened us most at that moment, was a call that rose from the elven ranks. It was not fear, not wonder, but an unabashed and unbridled joy, the kind of felicity felt by a damned man who had been granted a second chance at life. For at that time the elves were as damned and near death as ever they had been during the great skirmishes of Solsheim. The Battle of Moe's Ring was to be the final stand between Nord and Elf on our fair island. Led by Ysgrimor, we had driven the elven scourge from Skyrim, and were intent on cleansing Solsheim of their kind as well. Our warriors, armed with the finest axes and swords Nord's craftsmen could forge, cut great swaths through the enemy ranks. The slopes of the Moe's Ring ran red with Elf blood. Why then would our foe rejoice? Could one rider bring such hope to an army so hopeless? To most of our kind, the meaning of the call was clear, for the words were but a litany of elven chants and cries. There were some among us, however, the scholars and chroniclers, who knew well the words and shuddered at their significance. The snow prince is come, doom is at hand. There was then a great calm that overcame the elves that still stood. Through their mass the snow prince did ride, and as a long boat slices the icy waters of the fjolding, he parted the ranks of his kin. The magnificent white horse slowed to a gallop, then a trot, and the unknown elf rider moved to the front of the line at a slow, almost ghost-like pace. A Nord warrior sees much in the life of bloodshed and battle, and is rarely surprised by anything armed combat may bring, but few among us that day could ever have imagined the awe and uncertainty of a raging battlefield that all at once went motionless and silent. Such is the effect the Snow Prince had on us all, for when the joyous cries of the elves had ended, there remained a quiet known only in the solitude of slumber. It was then our combined host, Elf and Nord alike, were joined in a terrible understanding. Victory or defeat mattered little that day, on the slopes of the Moestring Mountains. The one truth we all shared was that death would come for many, victor and vanquished alike. The glorious Snow Prince, an elf unlike any other, did come that day to bring death to our kind, and death he so brought. Like a sudden violent snow squall that rends travellers blind and threatens to tear loose the very foundations of the sturdiest hall, the Snow Prince did sweep into our numbers. Indeed, the ice and snow did begin to swirl and churn about the elf, as if called upon to serve his bidding. The spinning of that gleaming spear whistled a dirge to all those who would stand in the way of the Snow Prince, and our mightiest fell before him that day. Ulfgi and Vulhand, Strom the White, Frida Oakenwand, Heimdall the Frenzied, all lay dead at the foot of the Moesring Mountains. For the first time that day it had seemed like the tide of battle had actually turned. The elves spurred on by the deeds of the Snow Prince rallied together for one last charge against our ranks. It was then, in a single instant, that the battle of the Moas Ring came to a sudden and unexpected end. Finna, daughter of Yorfir, and the lass of only twelve years, and squire to her mother, watched as the Snow Prince cut down her only parent. In her rage and sorrow, Finna picked up Yofria's sword and threw it savagely at her mother's killer. When the elf's gleaming spear stopped its deadly dance, the battlefield fell silent, and all eyes turned to the Snow Prince. No one that day was more surprised than the elf himself at the sight that greeted them all, for upon his great steed, the Snow Prince still sat, the sword of Yofria buried deeply in his breast. And then he fell from his horse, from the battle, from life. 
the Snow Prince lay dead, slain by a child. With their saviour defeated, the spirit of the remaining elven warriors soon shattered. Many fled, and those who remained on the battlefield were soon cut down by our broad Nord axes. When the day was done, all that remained was the carnage of the battlefield, and from that battlefield came a dim reminder of the valour and skill, for the brilliant armour and spear of the Snow Prince still shone. Even in death, this mighty and unknown elf filled us with awe. It is common practice to burn the corpses of our fallen foes. This is as much as necessity as it is custom, for death brings with it disease and dread. Our chieftains wish to cleanse Tholstheim of the elven horde, in death as well as life. It was decided, however, that such was not to be the fate of the Snow Prince. One so mighty in war, yet so loved by his kin, deserved better. Even in death, even if an enemy of our people. And so we brought the body of the Snow Prince wrapped in fine silks to a freshly dug barrow. The gleaming armour and spear were presented on a pedestal of honour, and the tomb was arrayed with treasures worthy of royalty. All of the mighty chieftains agreed with this course, that the elf should be so honoured. His body would be preserved in the barrow for as long as the earth chose, but would not be offered the protection of our Stalrim, which was reserved for Nord dead alone. So ends this account of the Battle of Moas Ring and the fall of the magnificent Elven Snow Prince. May our gods honour him in death, and may we never meet his kind again in life. Is this the legendary... Snow Prince, then? It's certainly got to be the spear. Look at it. It really does shimmer. Even after all these years. That's coming with us. Armour. And treasures. I don't think the armour and treasures are here anymore, do you? If they were in that chest, it's long been pilfered. But why the spear and the book? Is this simply another Nord, a Draugr? Somebody who came looking for it and ended up freezing to death in here? He's hardly, well, wrapped up and presented with honor. He's just kind of on a pedestal. And this, this doesn't look Nordic, nor does that chest. Is this not the resting place, then, of the Snow Prince? Is this simply... Well, where somebody ended up with a spear? Because they had the book with that history and... Hell, what? That might have been the greatest elf to ever live. The way that they write about him, and to think that they may not have even done him justice. His magnificence, this is. We're gonna need a treat. This book and this spear with the reverence it deserves. Can I... I know I'm saying that and immediately pulling it out to have a go. It's... Oh, it does look cool. It's very... weirdly, though. Imagine that sound whirling constantly, because we're no spear user. And I know it's a thrusting weapon, not really a spinning weapon. Let's put that away. Where's, where's good old black ice? Right. It is pretty cold still and snowy. How far is Doomsbazaar? Not very. Okay, let's push on there, and no doubt Lucian will be more than delighted to welcome us and show us some hospitality. I am suffering from frostbite in my fingers again. Right, let's pick this up. And the boots we got. Oh, actually, are those boots warm? Oh, I didn't bring a fur cloak, do I? I always forget a fur cloak these days. Right, these, coverage, three, warmth, nine... I'm nowhere near as good. I kind of wanted to try water walking. You know what? We're going to try the water walking. If we stay away from those egg sacs over there. This does look awfully fast, though. It, it's got to be said. This might not be the wisest idea. Right, Inigo, you're going to need to go around. 
Let's try it. Oh, um, I don't know if the boots are working. Okay. Maybe, maybe that gushing torrent of water was a little too much to try it on. I. Inigo! Oh no, Inigo, you okay? That's it. Come across. Come across. Grab my hand. Dude, should I... Is this a summoning spell? I think this is a summoning spell. Time. Unless you can get across. You... I'm, I'm just gonna... <laughs> Was that fun? It didn't look fun. It looked kind of fun. But right now... When we're freezing to death. Oh, it's not the time. How do we always end up in this position? You think I'd have learnt? Right, we need to invest in a warm cloak that we don't just leave behind constantly. God, it's cold. Right, there's Doom's Bazaar. Come on, we're nearly there. <coughs> yep, I'm cold as well. But soon. I'm going to be welcomed to the hospitality. I'm sorry, Mr. Goat. If you come closer, I'm going to turn you into a cloak. Oh, no. We're not wasting our time. Come on. We're nearly there. Look how close it is. Come on. Just a little further. Come on. We can do it. The gate's open and waiting for us. Come on. Just hop on. Oh, okay. We were that close to ending up like that Draugr we saw in the, the cave with the spear. Right. That steam looks awfully warm. Let's go stand near that for a minute or two. Get some of this chill out of our bones. And there was a dining hall, wasn't there? Do you think Lucian would mind if we stole the cutlery? I think he'd be okay with it. It's only cutlery, after all. Okay, that's better. That's a lot better. I need to get my breath back, but... Oh, that is a nice and toasty oven. We might need to turn off these valves as well. Actually, it's probably... We don't know if there's going to be a gas leak around here. It's probably better that we leave this oven on. Because at least that way we know it's burning up the gas around here. Now... Okay, that's going to be very hot. It's hot. It's very hot. Take the Dwemer pans. And... Can we turn off at least some of these valves? I don't think that did anything. Let's just leave it. Let's let's let Lucian sort that out. Right, help ourselves to the plates. While the door's open, let's hop down. It's just as well it's open, because unless I hadn't brought Inigo, I'd have no way of getting in. Inigo? Oh, you're there. I thought you got lost in the tunnels, then. Oh. Yeah, well, you know what? We might need to, um, help Lucian make some kind of ford through that. You know, get some of this rubble, just so we don't have to get our feet wet every single time we come and go from this place. And this place is very sinister with the red light, isn't it? But the exposed flame, very good at warming you up again. Now, we can take the shortcut, can't we? This should lead us straight to Lucian's study. He's not locked it at all. I mean, he's, he is expecting us, and it's... Well, it's not like there's a doorbell, is there? We can't exactly just ring the bell and wait for him to come up from his study, meander through the tunnels, and then let us in and run all the way back down again. Could we? Hello? Lucian? Lucian! Oh, it's good to see you! Ah, hello! How delightful to see you again! And you! I have to say, I'm getting on marvellously here. 
So much to study, so much to learn. Yeah? I've already made a number of fascinating discoveries about Lord Kaiser's ex experiments. I can't wait to start writing it up. Oh. But as much as I love my work here, the call of the open road still holds just as much appeal. If you have room for one more, I'd be delighted to join you again. Just say the word. Oh, I. Well, we will. I'm. Also, when you write up all those discoveries, would you donate a copy of them to the, the gallery by any chance? I'd love to be able to display your work. I mean, it's only fitting you've helped contribute to so many discoveries at the gallery that we should show off some of your discoveries. Now, what are we doing down here? I, I kind of wanted to follow you and see what you were up to. Oh, okay. No, we, we're leaving this stuff alone. This is... Having a look in the chat. But this is Lucian's gear. There's a piece of coral here. There, yeah, this definitely must be something Lucian brought. Increase the duration of potions. Oh, that's that's Lucian's. Oh. Is this Is this your workshop? This is complicated looking. Oh, I don't know where to begin. You might need to talk us through this. Because I have no idea what I'm looking at. Other than an anvil. And a, a sharpening wheel, a grinding wheel. Those I know. Oh, ow. Okay, it's hot. You could have warned me. You could have warned me. Am I, am I a little scorched? Mind your fur. Right, Lucian. Yes, my friend? Uh, come along. Let's follow, follow us. We'd like to go adventuring with you again. We've got the college to go back to as well. You know, we started studying there to further our magic, so let's get back to that. You do? Hooray! Onward to more adventure. Yes! Oh, you've changed your tune since we first went on adventure. You're like a completely different person from when we first met you in the in Dead Man's Drink and Fall Free. Right, is there anything else you need from here? No? We good to go? Damage control, though. There were four tests used by the Dweller in the planning of their cities. Pattern, disorder, evasion, and confrontation. It's a sensible system. There was a lot of confrontation in this one, wasn't there? What can I do for you, my uh, friend? Do you still have your gear? Sure, I'll carry what I can. If I take the hood... Oh, you yeah, put it all back on. Brilliant. And... Your gear's still pretty damn good, isn't it? Let's give you that hood back. And, oh yeah, we got to fill you in with what we've been up to. You had the tent, right? We've got a tent for all of us. So if I sleep in range shelter and you guys sleep in that, we should be fine. Right. Okay, we've got to fill you in on what we've been up to. You've got some right clink spears. I'll leave that with you for now. Let's let's not worry about that now. I've got you back. Hell yes, you do. It's good to have you back. I feel like we've got the, the compliment again. We went on a road trip, Inigo and I. It... It had its moments, but it had a lot of ups and downs. A lot of downs. And a lot of ghosts, funnily enough. We met one ghost in a Dwemer ruin, by the way. We found and impromptly lost at the key to the Ethereum Forge. Or at least part of the key to the oh, Ethereum Forge. Sorry, I was literally jumping with joy. Come on, all aboard. Yes, we... We, we got part of the key. It's split into four parts. It's like this whole, you know, cooperation between three different Dwemer states or cities sort of thing uh, to open the forge. And we found the entrance to the forge. Back, it's good to be back in a go. It is. It absolutely is great to have you back. And yeah, we found the entrance and we put the key in because we thought it would fit and then we couldn't get it out again. So hopefully that key will still be there, but we'll have to investigate the Ethereum forge with you our resident Dwemer archaeologist. Well, we do have an archaeologist, don't we? Uh, Professor Madras. Will you release our resident Dwemer archaeologist? And what else did we get? That was it. We were defeated an ancient evil. Guys? Oh, yep, yeah, come on. I'm, I'm just walking and talking. I'm trying to fill you in. I'm vibing mixed. And do you know the way out of here? Because I'm not wholly certain. It's this way. Yes, we defeated an ancient evil. And while we were at it, we found King Orgnum's coffer. Sealed away with said ancient evil. That was sealed away by the eternal champion. 
so money isn't really an issue anymore, I don't think. Long gone are the days where we had to scrounge around a couple of thousand septums to get that statue put in front of the gallery. Oh, God, remember when the gallery was haunted? We only stepped out for five minutes and come back, it's haunted. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that's very hot steam. Oh, we've also stolen a lot of cutlery. I hope that's okay. Anything I've forgotten? We did go through some tunnels and got more or less a whole volume of the, the Lessons of Vivek. There was a lot of ghosts involved in that one too. And there's... Picky's Beacon! Oh, we've not gone to get Picky's Beacon. I forgot all about that. The kind of the Snow Elven Prince's Spear. That kind of just outweighed anything else we were on with. Right, Sanamia's journal's back there. Picky's Beacon is... Oh, we were so close to it as well. We must have just gone straight past it. What time are we on? It is evening. Do we have time to do both? Because we don't really want to go past that shrine again. How would we get to the journal? That looks like an up and around sort of job. Or down and up? It looks tricky. No matter which way we want to tackle it. Can we go about it this way? Past Doom's Bazaar. No, no we cannot. Oh, that, that's actually very far down. This might be a, a task for another day. Well, I'm also glad, Lucian, that you were safe. Oh, sorry, did you guys go in there for shelter? Uh, I'm glad you were safe from whatever's plaguing Solflime and making people meander around in the dark at night. Yeah, now there's a snowstorm brewing as well. Let's just focus on Picky's Beacon. Let's get that. And let's get back to Raven Rock. There is... Depending on how much time we've got left, we could try and clear out the mines. And find out if there really is an East Empire cover-up at Raven Rock. That might be a good one to do if we've got time. I am curious. There's always a dirty secret somewhere. 